Hello there, Geminis. Welcome to your November 2019 tarot reading. So um, when I was shuffling out the spread, you have a lot of uh, cards that jumped out and a lot of major arcana cards. So I have one, two, three, four, four major arcana cards in a 10 card spread. So that's pretty significant. And um, not only did I have a lot of cards that jumped out, there were like three images that came out and the images look really good okay but um they were like really clear and they were moving so let me just talk to you about the images that i saw and how they relate to the cards and then we'll go into the reading so this is the first time i'm using this deck and by the way this is the white sage tarot deck the artist reached out to me and um, i've included a link to her um, website where you can find the a copy of this deck as well as other goodies that she has on for sale and the link is in the description box below so i hope you you know give her a uh, website a, a visit okay so when i was using this deck and for all the other signs too what i've noticed is it's a mixture of first of all uh, you know standard right away uh, imagery and interpretation is just you know like the standard tarot um, reading but it also uses animals um, so like animal totem and imagery of animals so I feel like a lot of messages came out and a lot of words came out too so it's a really interesting deck to work with either way um, the first image that I saw was um, I see this giant wall okay it's probably like 20 feet high and um, it's a little bit cracked and fractured. It has, um, it's like a cement wall. It has been there f for a really, really long time. We're talking decades. Um, there are some cracks along the side of the walls. And it's a really, really big wall to demarcate something. And um, you see the vision. Like everything is in black and white. And there's this... Um, this little boy, he's walking across this wall, going to school and then going home every single day. And then you see him doing this, you know, spiel, going through his routine every single day. And some days it would rain, some days it would be really hot, and there's like a crack in the wall. And the crack, over time, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So the boy, when you first uh, start to see him, he's like five or six, just going to school. And then uh, when he becomes a teenager, like around 12 or 13, he starts to no notice that the crack is getting bigger. And it, it's gotten big to the point where he's able to look through the crack and see what's on the other side of the wall. And what he's seeing is his world is, you know, black and white. It's like very, it's like almost like being colorblind where you can't see the spectrum of the rainbow. Okay, so everything you see is very black and white. But if he, once he's able to look through this hole in the wall, everything on the other side is colored. Okay, so you see like all the, the vivid colors and what he sees in the distance is like rolling hills, orchards, and you know, like a, a really big mansion in the distance. He wants to go there. He's definitely uh, lured in by the, the colors, uh, how abundant it is on the other side of that wall, and he wants to be there. And so, you know, every day he tries to, like, make the crack bigger, but it's a cement wall, so it's it's pretty sturdy. And so he kind of let that dream go, you know, to, to break down that wall. And so you see him as a teenager, and then he gets older and older. Now he's going to work, and he's passing through this um, crack in the wall. Every day the cracks get bigger. The vines start to overgrow. Nature is starting to reclaim um, this wall. And then you see him as a young man, probably like 18, 19 years old. And he's looking at the vines that are grown on the wall. And he realizes, maybe I can climb up and get to the other side. And so he does. He, you know, um, takes off his coat, climbs up the vines. And then he, it's a 20-foot wall. So he reaches the other side, jumps down, and he makes a run for the orchard and the house, the big mansion in the distance, okay? So right off the bat, what I'm seeing is, and I mentioned with the previous video as well, uh, the one for the month of October, there's a lot of repetition. There's a lot of things going around in circles, right? Um, not being able to find a way out or not feeling like you're, you're in a lot of control over your life, right? 
So I feel like that is this message for this month is definitely in opposition to what I felt for the month of October, where you are creatively problem solving. You're you're trying to get yourself out of a situation, and you're able to you know utilize your problem solving skills in order to get you where you want to be. And so whenever I look at walls, it's like barriers, blockages.、Um, They can be physical blockages. They can be things that actually exist in the real world to prevent us from、um, to to keep us in, but also keep things out. Right. So it goes both ways. It's a double-edged sword. But I also feel like you know they they、uh, metaphorically can be like. Self-limiting beliefs. Okay, I I really can't do that. I'm not good enough to do that, or even situations where there has been distance, there has been a rift, or you can't really fathom how to get where you want to be because of these blockages that might be real, might be perceived, might be imaginary, that is standing between you and the object of what you are going for. Okay. And time has a way of、um, breaking down these walls. Okay, as you see in this imagery, where it's like the 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 passage of time. Okay, realizing that we're in a situation that is not ideal, that is very routinized, that is very、uh, monotonous. Like it, it's like、um, a revolving door, and Knowing and understanding that it's a revolving door and that we're wasting a lot of time, and so you're making a break for it. Okay, you're、um, utilizing your free will in order to change a situation. So, not only is it just you know overcoming obstacles, but I also feel creative problem solving, and、um, it's like doing something very. Very bold, very impulsive, but it works out. Okay, it's something like very out of character is what I'm sensing, but in the end it works out. Okay,、um, so that that's the first message, and、uh, this message is、um, I I feel like it's linked up here with the first three cards. Okay, so let me talk to you about the cards. So we have the devil, and the devil deals with temptation. Okay, so in this deck in particular. It's definitely.、Um, it, it's like the. I'm hearing payout. Okay, so it's this、uh, fruit in the tree. Is the snake that is coiled around it. So if somebody reaches up for that fruit, it's gonna get bitten. Okay, so whatever it is, there's an element of allure. There's an element of temptation, and there's also a forewarning when it comes to danger. Okay. Um, forewarn is for forearm. So I feel like if you are aware of the dangers that are inherent in this situation, it doesn't mean that it won't work out. It just means that you need to, you know, anticipate how you're going to counteract these dangers. Okay, how you're going to be able to protect yourself and how how you're able to overcome these obstacles in order to get to whatever it is that you want. Um, the colors on the other side of that wall is very vivid. It's very like、um, the the colors are like it's like technicolor. They're the, the the hues, the spectrums are very very vivid, and so I feel like there's definitely something that is very eye catching, that is catching your attention, that is drawing your attention, and it's kind of like beckoning you to come towards it. And I feel like for many of you. This is definitely career opportunities. Okay, we have here three of pentacles. This is a situation where we can apply our skills, where we can take on more responsibilities, where we can coach other people, where other people come to us for、um, come to us for advice, come to us for counsel, or even come to us because we are kind of like the expert in our fields. Okay, so this is a card about consultation. And we're going from the three of pentacles to the four of pentacles, and the four of pentacles is usually like we have a finite amount of resources, and the pentacle suit deals with you know money, tangible things, assets, and things of value. So I feel like there's an, a major opportunity here for some of you guys to gamble, to like、um, to bet on something, to invest in something. And、uh, it's all very, very speculative. Okay, so once again, 
when it comes to like financial speculation, okay, making like educated guesses or making smart investment, it definitely requires a lot of research. It requires a lot of um, preliminary, you know, background work in order for the venture to pay out. So I feel like there's a situation here and you have a finite amount of resources and you're not sure where to devote your resources. And I feel like some things are a, a big risk and others are very, um, I, I want to say the risks are a lot lower. And so I feel like normally you guys are normally very risk adverse. Okay. So I, I do sense like in this situation, um, what, what it like, it's like what you see is not always what you get. So I feel like there's going to be some huge payout too, okay? But once again, uh, there are inherent dangers with speculation, right? Like we're not always 100% sure how things are going to pan out. So it's really important for you to do your research and to make sure that whatever you get yourself into, um, that you come prepared, okay? So I, I definitely feel income generating opportunities here where you're able to like multiply or even double or triple your income. And then I also feel as well uh, the need to come into a situation very, very prepared, okay? Um, with these two cards, what I do sense is um, well, right next to each other. The three of pentacles is consultation. The four of pentacles is holding back, okay? I feel like there's somebody here... Um, who is a little bit like it's almost like you're not really sure if you can trust them okay so should you reach out and consult them or should you you know like um, should you offer your expertise your skills and your guidance or should you hold back so I feel like there's a situation here where it, things are very very opposite like the energy is very opposite there's a temptation here to either reach out or there's a temptation to hold back Reaching out requires a lot of work and a lot of effort. Holding back ensures that things are safe and things are very, very stable. The four energies, it's like the four legs of a table. It's, um, it's very stable. It's very sturdy, but it's also really, really stagnant. So I feel like you're grappling between a major decision. There is a big temptation here in the picture. You're trying to weigh out your pros and cons. I have here... And this is the strength card. And the strength card is basically, um, with this card in this deck, it's not the standard uh, Rider weight interpretation, I feel. There is that infinity symbol up there, okay? So it's like wanting to make the right decision. Not only is it like the right thing, but morally right, okay? Wanting to do the right thing. Wanting to balance things out. Wanting to like... Um, I, I feel like fix a situation or really understand all the inherent risk involved before you make a decision, okay? So you're operate, operating from a space where you're not really making a move. You're, you're testing the waters, you're assessing, you're scouting, or you're just um, trying to get a lay of the land or trying to get like your bearing before you act okay so this is a card about deep contemplation but coming from a space where you want to be responsible you want to do not only what is right what is expected of you but what is also morally right okay so i feel like there's a situation here where three of pentacles consulting reaching out exchanging in ideas and you know opening up that channel of communication it seems to me like it could be very very burdensome okay it, it seems like emotions and and feelings and thoughts are wound up very very tight and there's something here that is so neatly packaged okay is wound up really really tight it is very burdensome and it's hard for you to know how to extract yourself from it it's hard for you to 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 know where do i even begin to unravel it where do i even start where is the beginning where's the middle and where's the end so i feel like there might have been for some of you a, a really really complicated situation that you're trying to resolve and you're not sure you're it it's like biting off more than we can chew and then not knowing, you know, what to do, like spit it out or just, you know, swallow it. Like, I, I feel like it's a situation where it's like we've already gotten ourselves into it. We've already, 
it's like too late to back out. But at the same time, it's more work to 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 continue like sunk cost. Okay, a lot has been invested in it, and uh, there isn't an easy way out. There isn't also an easy way to drop it either. So I feel like you're in a situation where you feel like reaching out, consulting, um, trying to plan for this situation might be a little bit more trouble than it's worth. Okay, and then on the other hand, what I see is with this four of pentacles. Holding on very, very tightly to things, okay? Um, all the sand dollars are sinking into the quicksand, okay? So let me show you. Four of Pentacles. It is very much about stability, but it's also about stagnancy, things sinking, okay? Um, it, it almost screams to me like a, a situation that is going downhill, we're holding on to it because it could be very comfortable. Um, and a lot of the times, I'm, I'm getting this imagery where you're kind of like, um, if you're, you've been in it for so long, you don't notice that it's sinking. Okay, you don't notice that you're standing in quicksand. If it moves really, really, really slowly and the changes come about in such a um, minute way, you don't notice it until a long period of time has passed, okay? Sort of like that image that I saw, the passage of time, the, the wall, the cracks in the walls get bigger. The vines start to overgrow and like nature starts to reclaim itself. Like, um, I feel like there's definitely something that is sinking and, and disappearing. Yeah, disappearing sinking into the quicksand, disappearing. And so the more that you put off or the longer that you put off, the more it's going to disappear. And at the end of it, all you're going to get left is not these pentacles, but just, you know, the imprint in the sand, okay? Like a, a disappearing act. So I definitely feel you're, you're conflicted about a decision and you're conflicted, you're conflicted, excuse me, about a uh, waiting too long, taking too long, and having something kind of disappear out of sight, okay? Um, what we have here is the Queen of Swords, and this could be your energy, Gemini, as an air sign. This is the card of Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, okay? Um, when I first saw this card, the thing that really stood out is not so much the blue eyes, but the... Um, the little the moon in the background, the crescent moon, okay? this It, it seems almost like an eclipse to me. So somebody, in, in the interim, if we're taking our time, in, if we're taking too long, it indicates an eclipse situation where somebody might be eclipsed out of your life, where somebody might turn very, very icy and very, very cold and very distant. And they're kind of like on the move, okay? This is the... Um, this is very menacing. Usually this card, you know, it's not menacing but in this deck it's almost like somebody who's on the prowl somebody who's a predator some uh, an energy that's very predatory and an energy that's of somebody who is like um you know like almost like night vision they they have such strong insights and they can see through it's almost like having x-ray vision they see through everything okay it's somebody who's very discerning who's very very sharp and they can be extremely intimidating to deal with just because nothing passes or nothing goes unnoticed nothing passes through and they they see and they hear everything so it's somebody with like you know highly in tune senses okay um, but I definitely feel an element here about, you know, eclipse, eclipsing, somebody eclipsing, somebody disappearing, okay? Um, so that's like the first image. Uh, there are two more. Let me try to remember. Oh my gosh, so I can't remember now. Um, let me see if I've taken notes here. Okay, so the whole concept about, you know, the, the eyes, okay, like um, turning cold and things like that, it's also as well echoed in this, um, this card. We have here the magician, sleight of hand, okay, covering something, concealing something, 
And it's almost like creating a distraction in front of the audience so that they're, they're, they're seeing what you want them to see. So I feel like for some of you, this could be your energy where somebody you're dealing with somebody who's a performer or you feel like you're putting on a show. You feel like at work, I have to be this way. And then at home, I have to be this way. And so I almost feel like role playing somebody who's putting on a show or somebody who's like going through the motions and, and you know, uh, pandering to an audience. I have to be like this with this person. I have to be like that with that person. I have to be like this. And with Gemini, you know, you guys are already like the split personality. It is really, really important for you to realize who you are on the inside. So I feel like, you know, wearing the mask and putting on a show and, and, and the whole concept about having to um, perform all the time, you might feel like you're constantly under scrutiny, okay? This is like surveillance, okay? Like um, it, it, it gives me like a, a very strong um, performance anxiety, um, having to uh, pander to people, having to keep ourselves in check, having to behave a certain way, mainly because we are being watched, we are being noticed, we are under scrutiny. And this can be as well at work where you're just feeling as if you have to perform, you have to reach certain quotas. Um, your subordinates um, performance or actions or demeanor or behavior is a reflection of you and vice versa your the the end product that you whatever it is that you produce in the work environment is a huge reflection of you so I feel almost like a situation where you feel like you're under scrutiny or you feel like you're in the limelight and you feel almost like you have to cater to what other people want and I mentioned before and I never finished that train of thought so sorry um, with Gemini it's 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 really important for you to find your center because your energy is very bipolar already because of that twin you know dual duality and so it's important for you to know who you are it's important for you to not have to put on these masks when you're dealing with different types of people and it's important for you to show your true self and not have to feel like you have to conceal any part of yourself when you're dealing with other people. Because in the process of concealing yourself as a dual sign, also as a mutable sign, you guys are very uh, changeable. So from one day to the next, you're constantly in flux your value system, whatever you feel is important. I feel like you can bend rules. You can bend rules to fit a situation, okay? And because of that, the sense of morality, the sense of what's right and wrong, the sense of like um, what is morally acceptable versus what is morally not, these things can get very distorted when you have to pander to other people when you have to perform according to what other people want and when you feel like your true authentic self is not you know coming to the surface so it's really important for us to examine the image of ourselves that we are projecting into the world how other people perceive us how we can come into our own self-expression that expresses our authentic self so i feel like there's a lot here about somebody who is trying to um, trying to conceal, trying to distract, using a red herring, trying to um, kind of like divert attention away from a situation. And then on the flip side of that, we have the high priestess, okay? And this is, um, it's like a standoff is what I'm sensing. So for those of you who are familiar with the tarot, the magician is somebody with all the elements and is able to... Um, manifest okay create it's somebody who is um it's 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 like working magic it's somebody who's a performer who's very charming who is able to get away with sleight of hands uh twisted logic it's somebody who's able to manipulate right and the high priestess is sort of like the person that you don't want to be around if you're ever a magician. The high priestess is somebody with like intuitive knowledge. It's somebody with like 
years of wisdom. It's somebody who is extremely psychic. They feel things, they sense things, and they 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 pick up energies. They're highly empathic. They have a very good read on people, and they understand people's motives and people's intentions. So what I'm looking at here is, um, it's a cat, okay, with the the crescent moon on its um, third eye, and it's looking right at the magician. It's like. I see through the, the, the facade, I see through the mask, I see through your intentions, I see exactly what you're trying to do. Okay, so I feel like one person is definitely trying to conceal information or trying to uh, distract or trying to withhold and hold back information. And then the other person is definitely already aware, okay? can see through the fog, can see through the distractions, and can see through all of this, the facade. And so this can feel really uncomfortable, right? And that would explain why you feel like you're under scrutiny. That would explain why um, you feel like you have to perform. That, that would also explain why you feel almost like... Um, you have to be, you know, a different person depending on who your audience is. And so this is the month where I feel like drop the act, okay? It's time to drop the act. It's time to tell somebody to drop the act. I feel like you might be dealing with somebody like this who is a performer and you're just like, I see through it, you know, you're, you're not fooling anybody. And on the flip side, Gemini's because you're great performers I feel like somebody might be saying this to you you know drop the act I see through the facade and you're not fooling me and so there's definitely a little bit of a standoff here this energy seems a little bit intimidating okay um give me just a moment that message the the image is coming back Okay, yes, so let, let me just talk about it before I forget because I don't want to forget again. So I'm, I'm seeing this, um, it's like a, what do you, it's a cliff, okay? It's a cliff. And um, there are these two cavemen. There are these two cavemen. They're wearing like animal skin. They're very burly, cartoony looking. And they're on this, the, this cliff and it drops off, right? And there's like a gully right here. And there's an animal underneath in, in that little ditch, okay, in that little hole. And uh, these two cavemen are kind of like talking amongst themselves in their own little caveman language. And there's like a big boulder. So I, I think like they're, one guy is saying to the other, let's drop this boulder down this hole so that it can kill that animal. And then that way we don't have to physically kill the animal and we can still enjoy the spoil of it, right? And so they, they, they do that. And um, the hole is a lot bigger than they think. And so they drop this rock down. They think it's going to hit the animal, but the rock drops down. And then it, it sort of like um, ricochets. It bounces off something, some um, like bumpy terrain, uneven terrain. And then it veers off and it never kills that animal. So I feel like there's a situation here where it's talking about detours or like unanticipated outcomes, okay? I don't feel like it's a bad thing. I, I just don't feel like it's a bad thing because when I saw the caveman, it was very cartoony. It was almost like a comic book rendition of cavemen, okay? Like just very few minimalist like um, brush strokes that renders a caveman. So I feel like it's not too serious, okay? It's not like um, the first image was very vivid. This one I feel is very cartoony, so it might not be as significant. But the message that I got from that is... A detour or an unanticipated outcome something that you thought would be one way and you're just like I'm sure it's gonna wor work out this way it has a different effect okay and and what I'm seeing here is it's actually going to work in your favor all right um, so going back to this performance I honestly feel like it might be you Gemini where you 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 feel like I'm almost feeling and seeing like somebody walking around on eggshells somebody is like hyper sensitive or hyper vigilant um, somebody who's picking up like the the nonverbal cues in um, 
human interactions really well. And so if somebody's like upset, you're going to feel very anxious and you're going to feel like you need to walk um, around on eggshells around them. And then if you're feeling like that they're sad, you might, you, you might, you know, inadvertently pick up their feelings. But either way, I'm seeing like, you feel like you have to watch yourself around a certain person and it's not allowing you to be your authentic self, okay? So here's what I'm sensing. There's definitely a big decision that you are making for this month. And hence, we have like, you know, the four major arcana cards coming in that indicates a lot of big events are happening. And, and, and big events are kind of like, um, it's like things are converging, right? So what we have here is your energy as an air sign being very decisive. Um, this animal's got, I don't know what it is. It. I don't know what kind of animal it is, some type of a feline. Um, it's got a sword on its back. So this is like gearing for battle, approaching a situation and not backing down, right? You've made up your mind. You're going to be decisive about something. And this is like getting ready to, um, getting ready to strike, okay? So this is a very predatory type of an energy, getting ready to strike. The eyes are narrowing in on the prey, on a situation, on a person. And if animals could talk, it would be, you know, almost like, um, you know, let me give you a piece of my mind, okay? It, it's, it's an energy that is very directed, a little bit forceful, strong, and, and just really uh, direct, very blunt, okay? Um, I feel like there's a situation here where you are behaving like this or you're you're anticipating a standoff or a a, a clash or like um, communication even with a person that might exhibit these traits, okay? Um, I'm seeing somebody who's who has turned a little bit cold, okay? Um, I'm looking at the eyes and if you're dealing with a Sagittarius, by the way, I just did a Sagittarius reading and I got the same type of energy where the eyes have gotten cold, have gotten more skeptical, have gotten more jaded, where it's somebody who's no longer like naive and childlike and, and you know, trusting. You're dealing with someone who is extremely discerning. So if you come at them with any type of a weakness or any type of hesitation or any type of like uncertainty... Um, they're not going to bite the bait. So they want someone who is sincere, precise, and strong, okay? Um, what I'm seeing here is there is a situation. There is a lot of fear in this interaction. Somebody wants to approach you, and they're very, very scared about your reaction. They feel like you might have already turned your back. They feel like you might have already cast them out of your life. Likewise, you can be feeling this way towards another person where you have already cast them out of your life or you they have already cast you out of their life, excuse me, so it's a vice versa energy and you're hesitant and trepidatious, especially about approaching the situation. And what's really standing between the two of you is this burden, okay? Things that have gotten really messy, things that have been, you know, bunched up, um, not very well thought out, entangled, messy, um, just difficult to extricate from. Okay, so there is a situation here where it's like you're, you're, you're a little bit nervous about approaching this situation or somebody is very nervous about approaching this situation with you. And I feel like one person feels that the other person has turned their back and moved on. One person is scared that the other person is upset and is getting ready to, you know, slice. And then the other person is like, it, either way, it's a situation where there is a lot of blockages in between the connection, okay? And so the whole imagery regarding detour unanticipated um, outcome it's coming into the picture because what we start to see is once you know the decision has been made to mend this rift or even to communicate or to put our heads together consult each other and try to solve this problem the 
the wands start to unravel, okay? The ribbons start to come off, okay? So, and what we have as well, this is one of the best cards in the deck. We have the Two of Cups, mutual energy, like coming back together. So I feel like you anticipate something is going to go a certain way and you're, you're, you're hesitant, you're scared, you're trepidatious about making this decision, um, going forward with this decision because you're just like, there are just so many things, so many factors, you can't really extract what is like um, a, a real... Um, a, a real consequence versus what is like an imagined consequence in your mind. So I feel like you're just inundated with all the possible outcomes that the situation could lead to. And you're neglecting to, you're neglecting to think that maybe it's not always going to be bad. So there's a situation here you're hesitant about doing because you're dwelling on all the ways in which it could go wrong. And then the moment when you start to unravel it starts to unravel, it falls apart, and it is kind of like very seamless. It's very easy to take it apart, dismantle, disassemble, and then rearrange. And the color schemes that I'm noticing with this is what was very, very, very burdensome, okay? What was like keeping all of this afloat, um, the blue or aqua or um, sea foam, whatever this color is. It's the Two of Cups, which basically means that, you know, like-minded, two people who are thinking the same thing, two people who are going to come together to consult, um, to consult one another because they're on the same boat or to consult one another because they are like-minded, okay? So the feelings are there. So I feel like if there has been an, uh, a situation where there is like um, a big rift, a boulder, between the two of you that you can't really knock down a wall that has been resurrected between you and another person. Um, the cracks in the walls are starting to, you know, um, fracture, get bigger, meaning that wall is going to come tumbling down any minute now. Okay. It's just a matter of time. So I feel like the whole concept of timing, letting time pass, I feel like for this month in November, if there has been a significant amount of time that has passed, Revisit this situation and fix it because you're going to have a really outstanding, um, amazing outcome from this where you're going to start to realize that, you know, all of these fears were definitely in your head. All of these things that you thought were, you know, too difficult, they're going to work themselves out. If there has definitely been like an estrangement or like some type of an emotional rift between you and another person and you feel like they have already slipped away. I feel things coming back together because, like I said, this is a, a really, really good combination. It's the counterpart, okay? It's like um, a couple. One person conceals. One person is afraid to to express. And, and I'm almost feeling like, you know, the, the, the person that plays like many, many roles, they're afraid of showing their true self. They might not even know themselves well enough to know who they truly are. And so they hide behind masks. They hide behind roles. They hide behind facades and characters, mainly because they're afraid to be vulnerable. And definitely a, there's a situation here where emotions have not been expressed because of fear of rejection, fear of uh, vulnerability, fear of being in the limelight, being exposed, being, you know, I almost feel as well, I'm hearing like seeing things for the first time, trying to, trying to see things for the first time. So maybe somebody is very, very afraid of showing feelings, expressing how they, they feel because they've never done it before. And so because they've never done it before and they're, they're having to do it for the very first time, they can feel very uncomfortable. It's like this feather, when you're tickled, that feeling is really, really uncomfortable, right? Um, and then I also feel like you actually don't need to be afraid because somebody has known it all along, okay? The high priestess, uh, one person conceals, the other person reveals, okay? So the high priestess could be the one that is, you know, the, the one concealing information. 
and then the other person reveals. So I definitely feel here there is reciprocity in a situation where if there has been like a, a little bit of a cat and mouse game playing or whatever it is, I feel like there is a coming together of something really beautiful, okay, and, and something very harmonious. So what you thought was very conflictual, I feel like it's going to take a detour and it's going to turn into to something really good. Whatever you thought was like very difficult to extract yourself from, I feel like the other person might be on the same boat and might be very willing to help you. And then whatever you thought was like messy and, and un, unchangeable and just, you know, difficult to resolve, I feel like there's harmony at the end of that resolution. All it is calling for you to do is to be very decisive, okay? To not like waffle back and forth and, and, and you know, um, like one foot out the door. It, it requires like swift, fast, predatory type of, a, you know, take a pounce on something, take a stance and just, you know, uh, kind of slice through that facade, okay? So I feel like you have some swift decisions that you need to make. You need to be quick on your feet here because something is slipping away, okay, Geminis? I hope that message uh, resonates with you. It came out really strongly, and I hope that this reading is helpful. Let me see if there's anything else. Um, okay, um, there was another image. It slipped my mind. I, I cannot remember it, okay? So it ju I, I just have the image of the wall with the cracks in it. And then on the other side is like colors, vivid colors, and the mansion in the distance. And then the, the, the cartoony men, cavemen with the boulder. Okay, so that's all I'm seeing here. Um, by the way, if you're interested in a reading, um, I do have a link in the description box below for a colleague of mine. She is based out of California. If you would like to book a reading for yourself or for anyone you know, if you're interested in some spiritual guidance, I highly recommend that you book a reading with her. She's phenomenal. The link to her scheduling website is in the description box below. If you also want to get these cards and support your local artists, the link is also down below, okay? Um, I will talk to you guys soon. I will be back for the December reading. And then if I have free time, I will try to do like a 2020 uh, yearly reading by the end of this year, if time permits. Okay, so take care of yourself, Geminis, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye bye.